Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this one. This is the second video in the series, Sonar for Dummies. If you haven't seen the first video, I definitely recommend checking it out. I will put a link to it in the description here. And I'll put a link to this video here in that description so you can find your way back. All right, let's get started on this one. You know, each, each time I add a video to this series, I'm going to add a little more information using more and more complex screenshots as we go. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them all. All right, let's get started on this. Right away, we're going to start with some bait. You can see we have three clouds of bait here. Uh, you can see they are bright yellow. They have all the colors of our uh, palette there. So we can see it's uh, bright yellow in the center. That means it is a very dense school of bait. It's probably tiny bait. It is threadfin shad. I know that. Well, we were netting it and it was very tiny. So when you see a very dense school like this, chances are it's very tiny, tiny bait because they're very small bait. They can get super close together and all their air bladders kind of, you know, you know, blend all together as one and it looks like one solid mass. So that's a good way to determine the size of your bait. If you have a nice thick cloud like that, chances are it's small bait. Okay. Now, if that was close to the bottom, it can be confusing. Sometimes you're not sure if it's a tree or a bush. A really great way to tell is you look at the top edge of the bait school. Now, if you look at the top edge here, it's very smooth. That usually means it's a school of bait. If it's rough on the top, it can be a tree or a bush, and you'll see it's smooth on the top and rough on the bottom. Nine times out of ten, that is a school of bait. So that's what you want to look for. All right, just below that, we're going to see a bunch of arches here. These are all our fish. These are fish that are just keying on that bait. This would be a great place to fish because the fish that we're marking aren't just hanging out. They are there to feed. They're underneath the bait. You can see right here, they're actually touching the schools of bait. They're right up in there. And, uh, you know, also when you see tight schools of bait like this, it usually means there are fish nearby and these bait schools are really staying tight together. Now, if we saw these bait schools all busted up and loose, that's even a better sign. Usually, it usually means that the fish are thrashing through and breaking them all up. So you can learn a lot about what's going on just by the condition of your bait schools. Something to really pay attention to, you know. All right, our arches are really pretty. They're almost perfectly symmetrical. That means our transducer is set up properly. If our transducer is a little crooked or if it's tilted up or down too much, we'll get half arches, like check marks, you know. So here we have nice full arches, so we know our transducer is nice and level. So we have our bait schools here, we have our arches. Let's look all the way up to the left here. A little bit shallow water, you're going to see two bumps on the bottom. Those are stumps, okay, and we can tell that they are stumps. It's not bait, it is not fish because there is no separation. You can see it's connected to the bottom. So when you see a hard return like that, uh, 99 out of 100 times it will be a hard piece of structure, a rock, you know, boulder stump, whatever. And we know it's not bait because, for one, it's connected to the bottom. And for two, you see the top is rough. The top edge is rough. That means it is probably not a bait school. That's not true all the time. But most of the time, if it's nice and smooth on the top, it is a bait school. So, so we have no separation on the bottom. That tells us it's a stump or a rock. Now, if you look at these arches here close to the bottom, they look like those stumps. The only difference is we do see space between the arch and the bottom. So that tells us it's a fish. Now, even if you're a flounder fisherman, right, and your flounder are laying or your fluke are laying right on the bottom. I mean, they're touching the bottom. They're squeezed to the bottom as tight as they can get. You'll still see a space there because that air bladder is a little bit off the bottom. And some of the older transducers won't pick it up as well. But today's you know new transducers, especially the Airmark Chirp transducers, the technology is so good that it really picks that air bladder up nice. So we can see those arches in the bottom. They do have separation off the bottom and they are fish. All right. Now, if you look down here, you're going to see a blue haze at the bottom between 30 feet and 40 feet of water. That blue haze, that is a thermocline or a section of our thermocline. That is colder water. It is cold water. It is dense water. It is more dense than the water above it. So it actually tricks the transducer into thinking, you know, there's something there, some return there. So that blue haze is our cold, dense water. That's a section of our thermocline. Okay. It also helps with what helps us fishing because I won't fish in or below a thermocline. 
there's not much dissolved oxygen down there although you can catch fish there and mark fish fish there i'm looking for active fish that are happy and they are feeding so i avoid a thermocline just a little side note there all right one last thing on this screenshot you're going to see a second bottom we're marking here in the bottom left corner if we set our range far enough you can see we're in 38 feet of water but the range is set to 60 feet here that will show our second bottom now if you set the range far enough you could pretty much always get to a second bottom where you can see some type of second bottom it's just a quick way to check our bottom density or our hardness so here our second bottom is very far from our real bottom so that tells us it's a relatively soft bottom clay mud it is not a hard bottom so if our second bottom was very close let's say an inch from our real bottom that would probably mean it's a rocky or very hard bottom so that's also a nice little tool there a little something to uh, mess with when you're on the water and play with your you know your uh, settings when you're out there you won't hurt it you know play with your range a lot of machines today you can throw them in auto and they do fine so you can always go back to auto if you're in trouble but hope you guys uh, dig this one like I said in the uh, sonar for dummies, I'm going to add more and more each time. I put up a screenshot with a little more information each time. If you have any questions or comments, please throw them in the comments below. And please give me a thumbs up. It really helps these videos do well. And it tells me that you like them. So I'll do more and more. Please subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching. Stay safe on the water. Love you guys. Mean it. Thanks.